guys are pretty good for a couple of clownfish, but joke's over. Last cup. This one's for game. There it is. Next. Yo, what are you guys doing? I told you. I only let them go out on the weekend. Dude, they said you said it. Are you thinking about getting a fish tank for your dorm room? Well, in today's video, I'm answering a bunch of questions you guys asked me on my Instagram about what it's like to keep a reef tank here at college. But first... Guys, so what do you think about my new mustache? Come on, it's college. You're supposed to make mistakes and do stupid stuff like this. What's up, 12G Nation? I am super stoked to be back. I took some time off after the summer to get ready for the start of this school year, which is pretty important because, you know, better grades means hotter wife. I'm back at school for my third year of college, which means I am officially halfway done. Crazy. I know, right? So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk about everything I've learned so far. This is what I would call the ultimate guide to keeping reef tanks at school, but this should still be super helpful for hobbyists of all ages trying to set up different sized tanks. I know some of you probably already have tanks and some of you probably don't have tanks and let's just continue with the Q&A. Looks like there's a few of you guys that wanted to know about where I go to school. Uh, and what I do with my tank over my winter, spring, and summer breaks. I'm currently a student at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin. It's about a three hour drive away from Chicago, which is my hometown. I said, I'm from Chicago. Richard, you're from Evanston. I only move my tank back home over the summer break. I don't for winter and spring break. And that's for a couple different reasons. The first is that I actually play on the basketball team here at Lawrence. So I stay at school over my winter break because I'm in season during that time. My spring break is only a week long. And so I can usually find another athlete who is in season or like an international student just to come into my room and feed the fish. I would say winter break is going to present the biggest challenge for most people just because it's a month long or so, but this is kind of where you have to get creative. Maybe you can bag up your fish and take them to a local fish store, ask the fish store to hold on to the fish and feed them for a couple bucks a day. Or you could set up two tanks, one at school and one at home so that over the breaks you can just take your fish with you. There's a lot of different ways you can make it work. So don't let this keep you from getting and setting up a fish tank at college. Also, I do have a separate video specifically on how to move your tank back and forth. I'll put the link in the description below. By the way, you guys cannot guard me. You cannot guard me. You can't. All right, so the next two questions I'll group together. Uh, at Josh Rushlow, show photos of the tank's progression if you have them. And then Mike Fagolski, how long did you cycle this tank before adding corals? So I set this tank up at the very beginning of my freshman year. I cycled it for about a month before adding anything at all. This is before I knew what Turbo Start by Fritz Aquatics was. Now I use Turbo Start to cycle all of my tanks in as little as a day, but sometimes it takes up to a week. That's still better than having to wait the traditional one month. So if you're a student looking to set up a tank, I highly recommend that you use turbo start and know what it's like where you want to get things going as quickly as possible and you also don't want all your friends thinking you're a weirdo because it looks like you're keeping a box of water as a pet for about a month my whole first year i didn't keep any fish at all i only kept coral this did make it in some ways a lot easier to have the tank at school then at the start of my second year i got my pair of miami white clownfish and i've had them in this tank ever since I just continued to add corals and over time the tanks just matured and grown into what it is today. At JO5Z, how much did you spend on getting this tank started minus the livestock and where did you get the tank? When people ask how much you've spent on your tank, billions and 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 billions. No, so a huge misconception is that reef tanks are really expensive. And although they can be, they definitely don't have to be. I'm gonna be making a video about this soon, but you can set up a 10 to 30 gallon reef tank with about $350. And most of that is actually going towards purchasing the light, the tank, sand, and rock, that alone you can get for about $150 if you wait for the right opportunity. I'm talking like sales, Craigslist. I got this tank custom made by a company called Ocean Box Designs. 
the owner Fung has some of the best handmade aquariums and accessories out on the market. I'll put a link to his website in the description below, but I think last time I checked, they're like a few hundred dollars, this tank. At Alex Levy, has the school ever given you any problems with keeping the tank? No, the school's never given me any issues whatsoever. Honestly, I think universities have a lot more to worry about. <laughs> At Julian.17 asked, how does your roommate feel about having the Nano Reef tank? That's actually a pretty good question. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering. It's definitely a lot more normal than what you're probably thinking. He'd always ask a lot of questions. He was always very interested in the tank. He always respected it for what it was. The only issue I could really think of that you might run into with a roommate is the noise. So if you have a roommate that maybe is a light sleeper or gets irritated really easily, then you should try to minimize the noise at night by turning off all of the equipment except for the return pump, of course. At Chiashin Shen, what's the dumbest thing your friends ever asked in your fraternity house? <laughs> um, I don't think anybody in my fraternity has ever asked like a really dumb question. Uh, in fact, just by coincidence, a couple of them actually kept saltwater tanks growing up themselves. Now, of course, at parties, it's a totally different story. I saw it, dude. Like, I got really dig your plants, bro. Thanks, I appreciate it, but they're actually coral. Well, then how do they get their energy, dude? It's not like they can drink Monster. Well, the majority of corals will use photosynthesis to get their energy. Oh, right on. So then they are like plants. They're not plants. They're completely different animals. Yo, you got some sick Nemo's too, but hey, where's Dory? Yeah, those fish are actually called clownfish and blue tangs. Wait a second. So then, like, how do you keep the Nemo's from eating the plants? Get out. At Liam underscore grieve, has anyone ever tried to spike the water or play with slash grab the coral, lol. I do think it's inevitable that at some point you're gonna get kids that, you know, poke the water. Eh, it's not really the end of the world, but if you have some really reckless friends and you're really worried about it, maybe you can get a security camera or something of that nature, which will actually be a good investment to have when you go on your breaks, so you can kind of keep an eye on your tank while you're away. At stance.imports, what's your biggest fear slash worry when setting up and running the tank? So most people have this idea in their head that someone is going to spill a beer or throw up in the tank, but my experience, real experience, has proven this idea to be completely wrong. Most kids are very intimidated by the fish tank. And if anything, they don't want to mess with it because they don't want to be held responsible for anything that happens to it. I'm probably most worried about my parents finding out how much more time I spend on my tank than on school. But I think they already know that. Well, they do now. Hey mom. So I had a few people asking me about how I keep my sand so clean. The major key to keeping your sand bed clean major key alert. is having good water flow. I have an Ecotech MP10 wave maker located towards the bottom right hand corner of the tank. Because I have a lot of constant water flow, there's no way any detritus can really settle at the bottom of the tank. It all gets swept up into the filter. <laughs> At Sharpie9725, do you ever vacuum the sand? I know some people prefer to and some people don't. I do siphon my sand. I think it's an effective way of removing nutrients. Nutrients. But I totally understand why a lot of people don't. It's also good to leave all that colonizing bacteria in your sand bed untouched. A bunch of you also wanted to know about my lighting schedule and settings. I'm using the Ecotech Marine Radeon. I keep the lights on for roughly eight hours, mostly on half blue and half white. From midnight until 2 a.m., they are on cyan. I think it creates a super cool contrast with the orange rims of the tank. I will say you barely need any intensity if you're running a Radeon on a tank this small. These are really powerful lights, and I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make is trying to do too much with the colors or cranking up the intensity too high. It seems like the most asked question I got was how I go about doing my water changes. I actually have a video specifically on how you can manage to get your water changes done at college. Uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. As for my water change schedule, I keep it really simple. I'll change 25% of my tank's water every week at once a leaf underscore now a reef. Hey George, your tank looks great. I'm also in college and was wondering how you balance school and your tank. Like, do you have a schedule you follow? For instance, do you have certain days you do water changes? 
what I would recommend is that you choose one day of the week that you decide to do your water changes on. For me, that Sunday, I do my water changes every Sunday, but you can choose whatever day works best for you. If you miss a week, don't sweat it at all. Just change a little bit more water the next time you get around to doing it. The important thing is that you get that degree so you can make more money to buy that dream tank of yours later on. At Z Homes, Nine wants to know what I feed my corals and clownfish. At the last Magna, one of my friends introduced me to this brand called New Vision. They gave me some samples and I've been using it ever since. And this might sound crazy, but you can just tell how high quality this food is from the way it feels and the way it smells. My clownfish really like them and have grown and fattened up a lot since I started feeding them this. At Dustin underscore Goudreau wants to know, do you ever feed your coral? If so, what type of food do you use? I've always used Refroids by Polyp Lab. It's just downright one of the best foods on the market you can feed your corals with. At Joey Jones 47, how do you hand feed your fish? I want to hand feed so bad now. So I don't think it's that hard to get your fish conditioned to eating out of your fingertips. My two tips to do this are to feed consistently in the exact same way. So you want to put the food in your fingertips and feed in the exact same section of the tank every single day. So they slowly over time realize that, you know, the food is coming from your fingers. Easy guys, be civilized. It looks like a couple of you had questions on my general maintenance schedule for this tank. Other than my water changes, I don't have a set schedule for anything else. I think part of owning a reef tank is reading and reacting to it as you go. Throughout the week, I'm making adjustments on my tank as needed. Now, I think I've just been in the hobby so long that I can kind of look at a tank and understand what's maybe going wrong with it and how to fix it very quickly. But for those of you that don't have that kind of experience, you can test your water weekly and that will give you insight as to what you need to adjust. But it's pretty simple. If your tank's dirty, clean it. If your tank is clean, I didn't really think that out. A few of you asked whether I dose the core elements like calcium, magnesium, and how I keep those in check. I trust my salt mix and doing water changes to take care of all of that naturally. I use RPM Salt Reef Pro Mix by Fritz Aquatics. Calcium's at 400, magnesium's at 1400, alkalinity 8.5, what else could you want? Look how clear it is. So if any of your major or minor trace elements are somehow unbalanced, the easiest way just to reset everything is to do a water change. You just keep doing them until until your tank looks better. A bunch of you wanted to know about my filtration. I don't use any additives. I have a filter sponge in the very beginning. Then I have as much marine pure block as I can fit in the rest of that section, along with some chemi pure blue. At Koopa underscore fishy, are you running a protein skimmer? If so, which one? I've been using the Reef Glass Nano Protein Skimmer for the last year. I really like it because it's super skinny and you can fit it in any Nano Reef filter and also have room for other pieces of equipment. Most all-in-one tanks come with a standard stock return pump. I highly recommend you upgrade that. I chose an Apex return pump from Aqua Euro USA. It's the biggest one I could fit back there. <laughs> It's doing a great job getting as many gallons per hour flowing through the system as possible. I'll put links to everything in my filtration in one section down in my description. So if you're interested, you can check all those different products out. At Wajitar, uh, do you dose your tank? If so, what do you dose? The only thing I dose my tank with is copepods and phytoplankton from algaebarn.com. Like I said, water changes take care of everything else but these are two things that people often forget about and adding these is the easiest way to create a more balanced ecosystem. And if you're looking to get a mandarin goby, then dosing copepods will become essential to your tank schedule and success. At Cameron Lewis 1214, what was the hardest thing about the whole tank setup? The hardest thing is definitely keeping everything stable and balanced. When you have such a small tank, there's a lot of fluctuations and that's why it's so important you have a really good water change schedule down, and at least decent filtration. At Murphy, what's the most expensive coral to date? Also the most expensive coral in your current 10 gallon. I don't think I've ever shelled out more than maybe a couple hundred bucks for a coral. I low key am way more into the really cheap and basic soft corals over the really high-end ultra SPS. Would I love a bounce mushroom? Sure, but 
I think as a student, I'm in enough debt as it is. At Zach Renfro, have you ever experienced a tank crash while running this tank? No, I've never experienced a crash, but I go through tons of mild up and down fluctuations. At Robbie Boombastic, what does your testing slash dosing schedule look like with all those coral in such a small tank? The main things that I'm checking constantly for are salinity, temperature, and pH. At Kurt Bonstel, how do you regulate the temperature when it gets too hot? This is a pretty legitimate concern. I've been trying to keep the tank temperature as consistent as possible. And when it's cold out, it's obvious you can use a heater. But the bigger problem that a lot of students might face is when your room is too hot. What I do is I have this little fan. It's called the A-Fan. It's by, I think it's a German company called Kolar. You can just clip it on the side of a tank and through the spout, it blows air onto the surface of the water, but this or some kind of other fan at Joseph 14378, do you wish you had a bigger tank? Most of the time I do because it would make it so much easier to care for, but then again, keeping tank transportation in mind, more gallons means more money means more problems. At Marissa Natsoshi, this tank is everything. No, deep dish pizza is everything. All right, guys, I hope you learned a lot from this Q&A. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my very best to get to them and answer as many as I can. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe because I give away a full tank setup to one of you guys every 10,000 subscribers. So the next time we're doing this is at 50,000 subscribers. We're almost there. It's my way of saying thank you to this community and I hope to inspire as many of you as I can to join this awesome hobby. Remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out. 6.36 p.m., we're live here on set. <laughs> Just chill, okay, we gotta go through the lines first. Day 48 without food. <laughs> Those are funny, but joke's over. Last cup, this is for game. Are you serious? That's gonna fall! What do you think about my new mustache? Guys, so what do you think about my new mustache?